Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we're going to continue our deep dive into the rotation by taking a look at all of the cards that have rotated, all of the notable cards at least, from Shining Legends. Now, I have to refer to Shining Legends as not a real set. What I mean by that is it's not one of our big sets we get every three months. It was an extra set that was only released in special products. Now, this wasn't the most amazing set ever, but there were some cards we're really going to miss. And before we start, I do just want to give a big shout out to Incineroar and his Profane Punch Attack, which in Japan was translated roughly as Goddamn Punch. Gotta love that. So starting off with the big losses, we've got Latios. Latios does 30 damage to the active and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It was a really good spreading Pokemon in terms of damage. And yeah, we had Tapu Koko, but this could 2 hit KO 60 HP Pokemon, whereas Tapu Koko would 3 hit KO. We are losing Hooper, which is really good just in terms of blocking Pokemon. It stops EX and GX Pokemon damaging it, and it's really nice. It was one of the best blocking Pokemon we had. We are missing Marshadow. Now, Marshadow has been a bit controversial in recent months. The fact that you can drop it down on the first turn of the game, make sure your opponent starts with a four-card hand. Little bit rude, little bit mean. Yeah, people didn't like it. People thought it led to some cheap wins. Well, it's gone now, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, the biggest loss in the entire set. Zoroark. Zoroark is a phenomenally big, important card that we are losing. It has been the very best card in the game pretty much since it was released. We've seen it winning with Gardevoir. We've seen it winning with Garboda. We've seen it winning with Lycanroc. We've seen it winning with Buzzwole. We've seen it winning basically on its own using Oranguru in a control deck. We've seen it time and time again. Since it came out, it's never been far away from the top tables. And I don't think it is any exaggeration whatsoever to say that over the past couple of years since it came out, it has been the very best Pokemon in the game. Now, there are a bunch of Pokemon that have seen a little bit of play here and there, but haven't been great recently, including Venusaur. Venusaur saw a bit of success and a little bit of play. It doubled up all your basic grass energy. It wasn't energy acceleration per se, but it doubled them up and it let you pay attacks more easily. And it was mostly good with Shining Genesect, which we're also losing. Shining Genesect could move a grass from one of your other Pokemon to it once during your turn. And then three colorless energy, 50 damage, plus 20 more for each grass energy. Two grass energy and a Venusaur would mean you're doing 130. This deck saw a bit of love and a bit of success. We are losing Manaphy. Manaphy allowed you once during your turn to heal 20 damage from one of your Pokemon with a water energy attached. It was decent healing. We are losing Raichu. Now, Raichu was used with Pachirisu and its Snuggly Generator to just get a whole bunch of damage on the field and then smash. In more recent times, 160 damage could be done with a Thunder Mountain and a Tapu Koko Prism Star so that you would essentially be paying a single energy for it. And we've got stuff like Electro Power now, but the honest answer is we've got better Lightning Pokemon, so this one hasn't been great lately. We're also losing Raikou. Raikou's a weird one because it's been seen in the occasional deck here or there. It's a kind of classic attack we see for a lot of Pokemon. One energy, 30 damage, and attach an energy from your discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. It's a really good Pokemon for accelerating a bit of energy, but in a fast, hard-hitting format, it's arguably a little slow. But we've seen it popping up in deck lists here and there. We're losing Mewtwo GX. Now, this has seen a little bit of play and a little bit of love in Malamar decks, though it's not as trendy as it once was. It's just a decent attacker, if I'm honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, 2 energy, 60 damage, heal 30 wasn't amazing. It was largely the GX attack that did 200 damage for free energy and went through any effects on the defending Pokemon. If your opponent used something like a Dawn Wings Necrozma to try and stop you attacking, this would get a one-hit KO anyway.
And we're losing Shining Arceus. This is another one of those Pokemon that spread a bunch of damage. As long as it's your active, you prevent all damage done to your bench by opponent's attacks. And for 4 energy, it did 30 to each of your opponent's Pokemon. That is, of course, for those of you paying attention, 10 more than Tapu Koko. Problem was, it was a very expensive Pokemon, and it was never great. Now, there were a few Pokemon in this set that were never particularly good, and never saw a particularly large amount of success, but really did look like they had a huge amount of potential. So we had the Shaman. Shaman for 2 energy, 30 damage, but 90 if you had a Pokemon KO by damage during your opponent's previous turn. Should have been good. Saw it teched in occasionally, especially in Venusaur decks, but it did not set the world on fire. Keldeo, again, seemed like a good, decent attacker for 2 energy. It did a base 20 damage, plus 20 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Add in a little bit of counter energy here, and this could be a decent water type attacker for just a single energy attachment. Should have been good was okay. Mew, I adored Mew. Now, the 30 HP was hilariously low and really did hurt, but free retreat and an attack for a single energy that can attach two energy cards from your deck to your Pokemon in any way that you like. And this is energy cards, not basic energy cards, so this could be used very nicely to get special energy out. I think it was the 30 HP that really did this in, because it was a lot of fun. We also are losing the Reshiram and Zekrom. They had Outrage back. Now, Reshiram and Zekrom had this back in black and white. Maybe they were better back then when Pokemon didn't hit for quite as much. But double colorless energy, 20 damage, plus as much damage as is on you. Lot of potential here with Reshiram and Zekrom, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of potential. Though they didn't live up to it this time around. And I do just want to give a little bit of a shout out to my boy Croknor. Maybe it's because we never had a good enough Feraligator. But the ability whereby if it's on your bench, you can move all your energy to your active to it, switch it to the active, and as long as it's been down a turn, you then evolve up into Feraligator and smash. Maybe if we'd had a really good Feraligator GX, this could have been amazing. But we never even had a Feraligator GX. Now, in terms of trainers, it's a slightly weird one, because Shining Legends did, in and of itself, reprint a bunch of staple trainers, but because it's being rotated out at the same time as the others, it ain't going to keep them in the format. So, Damage Mover has gone away. Damage Mover just moves damage from one Pokemon to another. From one of your Pokemon to another of your Pokemon. Could be used for stuff like Reshiram to do more Outrage damage. Could be done to save from attacking and being KO'd. Honestly, it never saw a huge amount of play. We are losing Energy Retrieval. The way to just pick up your energy. Now, we do have Energy Recycle System still in the format. Which can either pick up one or shuffle three back into your deck. But it's not good enough. Fire decks are getting Fire Crystal, which picks up free, which absolutely is good enough. But other decks are going to miss it. We're losing Great Ball, which sucks because we're also losing stuff like Ultra Ball and Nest Ball. Our Pokemon search options are much worse after rotation. We are not losing How because it was reprinted in Celestial Storm. And we are not losing Lily because it was reprinted in Ultra Prism. We are losing Pokemon Breeder. You got to draw two cards. You got to heal. This essentially saw no play whatsoever. We're also losing Pokemon Catcher, but this is at the same time as we're losing Guzma and Counter Catcher, not to mention Lycanroc. Suffice to say, our gusting options are not what they once were. We are losing Sophocles. Now, this wasn't the best draw card we ever had. Discard two, draw four. But make no mistake about it, some decks did use this. And especially decks like Naganadal that want to discard energy. Or decks like Vespaquen, which I know hasn't been legal for a year, but it's just an example. Which want to discard Pokemon. This could be good. We're not losing Super Scoop Up because it was reprinted in Celestial Storm. And we're not losing Switch because it was reprinted in Celestial Storm. We are losing Warp Energy, which was basically a colorless energy that let you switch when you attached it. It was great back in the day with Gyarados. 
It's not really seen a huge amount of play this go around. It's not been anywhere near as good. We are losing Ultra Ball. Like I mentioned earlier, our Pokemon search engine is not what it used to be. And we've had Ultra Ball for a long time. A lot of players are going to really struggle without this. And we're losing double colorless energy. Double colorless energy is amazing. Now, to be fair, the best use for this was Zoroark, which is also rotating. But make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great card that is going to be missed. It was a slightly smaller set than some of the others, and it didn't have quite the list. But losing cards like Zoroark and Mars Shadow and Hooper, we're going to really miss them. And then the fact that this was the most recent set where we had Ultra Ball, Double Colorless Energy, Pokemon Catcher, Energy Retrieval, etc. And they're all going away. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, it might not be the biggest or best set ever, but it certainly will be missed. So... That's what we're losing, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time for you to tell me what you think about Shining Legends. What are you going to miss? What do you think we need back? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays where we talk about games that don't have pokemon in but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.